are you feeling today? Please call me Jane. I feel okay, but despite taking the hydro, the hydro, what do you call it? My blood pressure just doesn't seem to be going down much. Well, it's called hydrochlorothiazide. I know that's a mouthful, so you can just call it HCTZ. HCTZ, okay. Well, the HCTZ doesn't seem to be helping my blood pressure very much. Well, that's why you had this follow-up appointment today. I see your provider has changed your prescriptions. Your HCTZ was discontinued and replaced with furosemide and lisinopril. I want to make sure you understand why those changes were made and let you know how the new medication, medications will work. How does that sound? Oh, that sounds good. I'm a little confused about what's going on. I thought the HCTZ was supposed to fix my blood pressure. Well, the HCTZ works as a diuretic. That means it helps your body to get rid of excess water, and that can often be enough to lower one's blood pressure to the normal range. But it doesn't work for everyone. Well, that's what I thought it was supposed to do, but it doesn't seem to be working right for me. Well, these two new medications work together to help lower your blood pressure. Furosemide, also known as Lasix, is also a diuretic, and it will help uh, lower your blood pressure by getting rid of excess fluid. Lisinopril works as an ACE inhibitor. Does that make sense? Sort of. I would like to know more. I understand that a diuretic helps me get rid of extra water. But what does ACE inhibitor mean? Well, ACE stands for angiotensin converting enzyme. Lisinopril works to lower your blood pressure by dilating the blood vessels. When the diameter of your blood vessels is bigger, mm -hmm. your blood pressure goes down. Hmm. Does that make sense? I think so, but can you explain more about how that ACE thing works? Yeah, it's a little complicated. Mm -hmm. There's a hormone in your body called angiotensin 1. Mm -hmm. It goes through this process of conversion in your body and turns into angiotensin 2. Okay. Angiotensin 2 works by constricting your blood vessels and making your body retain water. This, both of these things will raise your blood pressure. Mm. ACE inhibitors work to block this conversion, so it prevents the blood vessels from getting smaller and stops your body from retaining that water. That's how it lowers your blood pressure. Hmm, well that sounds interesting. I can see why taking both of these drugs together will work better than just taking the HCTZ alone. The furosemide helps my body excrete the excess water, which will lower my blood pressure and the lisinopril will dilate my vessels and stop the angiotensin conversion thing from happening, which will also help with lowering my blood volume and blood pressure. I think that taking these two medications together will really work for me. I'm glad we were able to help you understand your new medication regimen. Oh, me too. Now let's talk about how to correctly administer these two medications. That sounds good. It is best that you take furosemide in the morning to prevent you from um, having to wake up at night to urinate, since mm -hmm. it is a diuretic. Oh. You can take it with food or milk if it upsets your stomach. And furosemide pills are, pills are pretty small, but you can crush them if you need to, if you have difficulty swallowing them whole. Okay, well taking it in the morning does sound like a good idea. I'd hate to have to wake up in the night to have to go to the bathroom. It's hard for me to get back to sleep. Right, I understand. It's also important to weigh yourself daily to see if the medication is working and that you're losing some water weight. Do you have a scale at home? Well, of course I do. Great. That's an easy way to monitor if the diuretics are working. Just weigh yourself at the same time every day and be on the lookout for changes. Okay. If you miss a dose, take it as soon as possible, unless you're too close to the next dose. <clears throat> oh, you definitely don't want to double dose on this medication or you'll pee all night long. <laughs> Fair enough. Now, as far as the lisinopril is concerned, you want to make sure to take it at the same time every day, even if you start to feel better. Okay. You should avoid salty foods and alcohol while taking this medication. And it can make you feel dizzy, mm -hmm. so it's important to avoid driving or performing any other activities that require alertness until you know how you're going to respond to it. Oh, that sounds reasonable. Another thing you can do to check the effectiveness of these two medications is to regularly check your blood pressure. Mm -hmm. Do you know how to do that? Well, that's something that I do when I go pick up my medications at Walgreens. Oh, perfect. So keeping a log of your blood pressure readings is a great way to evaluate the effectiveness of these two medicines. You might also want to bring that information to your follow-up appointments. I'm sure your primary health care provider would appreciate it. Well, I can do that. Okay. 
Let's make sure we're on the same page regarding safe medication administration. Okay. Can you tell me how you will take furosemide? I will take it in the morning with breakfast, and I will also check my weight daily to make sure I'm losing water and not gaining. Sounds good. What about the Cinefrone? I'll take that one at the same time each day, even if I start to feel better. I won't drive until I know how it affects me, and I'll reduce the amount of salty foods that I eat and definitely not drink alcohol. Perfect. Um, I would also like to go over some side effects to look out for with you, as it's very important for you to be able to recognize when you need to notify your healthcare provider. Okay, that is very important. I'm all ears. Because both furosemide and lisinopro work to lower your blood pressure, there is a risk of your blood pressure getting too low. Can you mm. believe it? Well, that would make sense since, since they both work to lower my blood pressure. Yes, and there's something called orthostatic hypotension. Mm -hmm. It's just a fancy way of saying that your blood pressure can really drop when you change positions, like from laying to sitting or sitting to standing. Mm. It can make you feel dizzy or lightheaded, and it increases your risk of falling. So you need to be careful when you change positions. Just do it slowly and give your body a few moments to adjust. Okay, I definitely will do that. I wouldn't want to fall and break a hip. We definitely don't want that. Another thing to be aware of is dehydration. This is a risk because your body is getting rid of all that extra water and some electrolytes along with it. Follow your body's signals and drink water when you feel thirsty. Okay, that shouldn't be a problem. Now, remember how I talked about weighing yourself daily? Mm -hmm. It's important for you to check your weight daily while you're taking furosemide and report to your healthcare provider if you get more than three pounds in one day. Oh my, I hope that doesn't happen to me. Three pounds in one day? Let's hope not. Um, like I said, it's an important sign to be on the lookout for. Um, you also need to be on, on the lookout for any sort of rash and report it right away because this could be a sign of an adverse reaction. Mm -hmm. Now, as far as the lisinopro concerned, uh, the main side effects you can expect will be hypotension. Um, the low blood pressure that we already talked about, mm -hmm. okay? Okay. When you're at Walgreens um, and you get your blood pressure reading below 90 over 60, mm -hmm. you should definitely call your provider. Okay. Sometimes people get a funny taste from it, but that usually goes away within 8 to 12 weeks. Mm. And you might also develop a dry cough. Now, it get, if that gets too bothersome, you'll need to let us know, um, and we might need to look for a different medication if that's the case. Okay, well, I'll keep that in mind. <clears throat> there is one rare but major adverse effect that I really need you to be aware of. It's called angioedema. Have you ever heard that term before? Uh, no, but I don't think any side effect with the word edema in it can be good. What is it? Well, it's a case of very severe and rapid swelling below the surface of the skin. Mm -hmm. It usually happens around the face and can be very serious if your throat swells up. Oh, that sounds really scary. I'm not sure if I want to take this medication. Well, your chances of angioedema occurring are very low. It's just important for you to be aware of it and look for any signs of swelling on your face. If that does happen, stop the lisinopril and notify your healthcare provider right away. Okay, well I certainly will. Now let's review what we've talked about this far. Okay, I think that's a good idea. Could you recall at least three side effects that need to be reported to your healthcare provider? Well, sure, there's that angioedema thing that you talked about. So if I notice any facial swelling, especially around my eyes and my mouth. Um, also, if I, gain any, if I gain three pounds in one day, then I'll call. And of course, any kind of rash I should um, be aware of. Um, also, I want to remember that my blood pressure might get too low, making me dizzy. And then I'm at a greater risk for falling. Um, so I'm supposed to change positions more slowly so that my body has time to adjust. Uh, but if it's less than, uh, what did you say, 90 over 60? Right. 90 over 60, then I should just call the clinic. That sounds like you got this. I hope everything made sense to you. I know this is a lot to remember, so I have a couple of pamphlets to give you about the furosemide and lisinopril. Oh. Well, just gives over the, some of the um, side effects and adverse mm -hmm. reactions to look out for, mm -hmm. okay? Please let, feel free to call if you have any questions at all. Oh, well, I certainly will. Thank you so much. <clears throat> now, don't forget to schedule a follow-up appointment about a month from now on your way out. Have a great day.